Hey everyone, so we are going to look at how to turn the render on the left into the render on the right. And the only difference between those two renders is one node that's added in the compositing tab. So if you've never done any compositing in Blender, uh, there are a couple things that you kind of have to look out for, but I'm going to walk you through it step by step. So let's get started right now. All right, so I am here in Blender and really quick word on the lighting in this scene. Um, if I go into my shading tab and I go to the world setting, you'll see that I am using an HDRI. Um, it's set down pretty low to 0.3 and I will link to this uh, specific HDRI in the description just in case you're interested in working with it. But I'll go ahead and go back to layout. And if I go to my light bulb model here and I just kind of hide this glass element, you'll see this light coil piece it has an emissive texture and the strength is set to 200. So this technique that we're gonna look at um, with compositing and the glare node, it works really well with emissive textures. So just wanted to point that out. Um, that's the only lighting in this scene and then that HDRI is just giving us just a tiny bit of realistic lighting um, and reflections and that sort of thing on the glass element. Um, all right, so at this point, I'll go ahead and go into the compositing tab. And in Blender, by default, this is what you see when you go into the compositing tab. So I'll show you just kind of how I like to set things up. Um, first of all, with my mouse in this area, I'll go ahead and hit N on my keyboard, and that'll hide that window to the right, which I don't really need right now. And uh, the next thing that I like to do is I will split this area in two this area on top here. Um, this area on the left, that is gonna stay as the compositor, that's great. Um, this area on the right, uh, this new one that I created, I'm gonna go ahead and set this as the image editor. Um, and then this center area on top, I'm gonna go ahead and select render results. And just kind of zoom back out there. Um, if there's a lot going on in your scene, you can just search render result down there, um, but I'll just go ahead and select it. And this is kind of one of those tricky things. Um, if, you, if you haven't done compositing in Blender before, um, the render result currently is bringing up this blank space. And that's because this is the first time that I have opened this file. And so basically what's happening is uh, the compositor, it doesn't have anything to go off of. I actually have to render my image first before it does. So I'm gonna go to render image and I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll see you back here in one minute. So now once I have rendered my image, you'll see that I actually have something on the right side to work with in my image editor window. And the next thing I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna go here where it says use nodes and I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And that will bring up these two nodes here, the render layers and the composite. And once I have these two nodes in place, I'll go ahead and make a little bit of space here and just drag them apart. And then to add a node with my mouse in this area, I'll go ahead and hit Shift A, which will allow me to search for any node. And I am going to search for the glare node. And I will just go ahead and drop that there in between. And already you'll see that this is, um, this is really going to drive that effect um, that we're after. Um, by default, when you bring in the glare node, um, it's set to the streaks setting that you'll see here. Um, the one that I like to use and the one that I use most often is fog glow. Um, but definitely, I, you know, I would encourage you to experiment and play around, um, can get a lot of great um, results with uh, the glare node and these different settings. But like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and go to fog glow. And the size um, basically refers to the, the general size of the glare. So um, for, for what we're doing here, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and increase it to the max value, which is nine. And then for the threshold, I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down, um, let's say to 0.2. And so, if I hit M, that's gonna mute this node here and we can see the difference. Um, and really now what that emissive texture, how, how that's affecting our overall scene. You can see it's pretty dramatic there. Um, so yeah, as far as easy compositing goes, I love adding the glare node. 
bringing that in, sometimes you have to bring the threshold down pretty low um, and kind of balance that out. Um, there's other simple compositing that you can do, um, kind of levels and that sort of thing to balance things out. Um, but yeah, generally that's kind of how you use the glare node. The other node that I wanted to talk about and that I use um, all the time, I'll go ahead and hit Shift A to search again. And that is the lens distortion node. So I'll just search for lens. And again, I'm gonna just drop that there. Um, bring this over a tiny bit. So the lens distortion node is really great for adding just another layer of realism to your renders. A lot of times it's really subtle, um, but these two settings down here we can look at. The first one is distort. Um, and this basically, go ahead and show you, um, this basically distorts your image the same way it would if you were working with an actual camera lens in real life. So I like to keep this really low, let's say 0 0.007, something like that. And then here where it says fit, I can go ahead and click that. And then that'll get rid of those borders that we saw kind of on the edges that were happening. Um, and then down here where it says dispersion, this is another really interesting setting. And this basically refers to how light um, interacts with the camera lens. Uh, this one I like to set even lower, normally uh, let's say 0 0.003, something like that. Um, yeah, and you'll see this, Again, it, it, it's very subtle, but just adds another layer of realism to your renders that is really great. Um, so if you're just starting off in compositing, these two nodes are a great place to start. And yeah, that's how you do basic compositing. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.